Hello, hello, and welcome. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness. And on this show, I talk about how to expand your world of thought, explore the world of positive thinking, law of attraction, and consciousness from many points of view. I intend to share with you information that will enlighten and empower you in your life. I want to encourage you to think of the positive and show you that miracles can happen because I truly believe you've been given the power of the word and thought to create the life that you desire. Well, I want to welcome you. And if you're new to this channel, thank you for listening. And please like, subscribe, and share so others can know they have the power to create the life that they desire. Well, I'm still working on Catherine Ponder and the Prosperity Secret of the Ages book. And, you know, I was going through it and trying to decide, okay, do you want to cover most of what's in the chapter or do you want to just kind of um, comment, comment on it and as I was going through this chapter I said you know you cannot take away from the author their voice the way they explain things so we're going to go again with a multiple week probably two weeks on this chapter but this is the chapter called the secret of overcoming hard conditions many of us have had experiences that it was hard we've gone into a room and and cried because it was hard we've had experiences at work or at at I wanted to say at church, and I'm going to say at church, at home, with friends, that they were difficult for us. And so this chapter is going to enlighten us on things, and she's going to deal with it with the story of Cain and Abel. And many people know about the story of Cain and Abel, even if you weren't a person who was taught the Bible or studied the Bible. There's many stories of two brothers going at each other and one is good and the other one is not so good or the one is jealous. Hey, (laughs) I can think of one right now and that's uh, Prince Harry and Prince William. And that's all I'm going to say on that one. (laughs) Anyway, let me get started. You can do one of two things when hard conditions arise in your life. You can fight them or you can overcome them. The word overcome means to come up over. The success symbology symbology found in the story of Cain, Abel, and Seth children of Adam and Eve shows you how to come up over hard conditions rather than continuing to fight them. Cain was a tiller of the soil. The name Cain means possession. He symbolizes the earthly human phase of man's being that is self-centered, possessive, fearful of its rights, always trying to grab or force its will on others it is the Cain phrase of man's being that usually produces the hard conditions in life which he must face and either fight or overcome hmm so the Cain phase hard conditions and, and her description, self-centered, possessive, fearful of its rights, always trying to grab. You know people who, who continue to feel as though things are being taken away from them? That, that, that there's, I've got to get it before somebody else takes it away from me? I need to, you know, we got to get out there and get it. And then there are those who 
say they believe as I believe and that there's enough for all and when it seems that the supply is dimish, diminishing spirit always finds a way to increase that supply let's take the example of the of of money all right yeah the federal government prints money you know there when i was coming up who talked about a trillion dollars or a billionaire we were looking at millionaires at the time so yeah it does appear that there is a lot going on. Okay, so let me continue. Abel was Cain's brother. The word Abel means breath, symbolizing man's invisible or spiritual nature, which constantly tries to harmonize, balance, adjust, refine, and bring forth the good in man's mind, body, and affairs. Just as these two brothers were in conflict, often the human and spiritual phases of your being are in conflict. The Cain phase, man's human nature, wants to possess, control, dominate. Oh, boy. Prince William just keeps coming to mind on this, and you know, for those of you who may not know, that's from uh, United Kingdom. Anyway, the able fates, man's spiritual neighbor, nature, wants to harmonize and produce good results in a quiet, unassuming way. Able, Prince Harry. I know some of you may not agree with me, but this is my show. <laughs> In this famous old allegory, Cain killed Abel. And Cain then went into the land of Nod. And this is Genesis, the fourth chapter. At times, we all try to force our good. The human Cain tries to destroy the higher ideas of good within us, Abel, that desire expression. When this happens, we find ourselves also in the land of Nod, in a state of confusion, uncertainty, fear, and bewilderment, which the land of Nod symbolizes. So let's look. When we're at odds with others, family, work, acquaintances, business, you know, we're in confusion, we're in uncertainty, we're in fear, and, and as she said, bewilderment. You know, the current political things that are going on right now, it reminds me that we, we could be in this land of Nod. Yes? Things are changing, so let's look at the next section. Force causes mental illness. Now, I don't know if I totally agree with her on this, but let's go here. All kinds of problems, mental, emotional, financial, family, social, result when man raises Cain. And I know you all have heard that <laughs> before. That what I want to say colloquialism before. Result, when man raises Cain by trying to force his will and his way upon other people. <laughs> our mental hospitals and our divorce courts are filled with people who are in the confused land of not because they tried to force their good to them through willfulness and domination or because they were the victims of someone else's strong will which sought to force them into certain patterns of thought and actions against their better judgment okay I'm still going back and if you know the story well if you read the book Spare right Harry was 
taught to think a thir certain way. He was taught that if he needed to give up a kidney, then he had to give it to William. If it was, he thought of the idea, but because William was the higher, William was the cane, he, the, he had to share the idea with William. I haven't talked about Harry and Meghan and William and Kate in forever, but this one just brings it in. But the other one is people trying to force their will upon women's bodies. We're in the land of Nod at this time. And um, we don't want to be there. Let me continue with her book. Often parents are guilty of trying to force their children into the parents' own patterns of thought and action, and then they find themselves and their children in the confused land of not. A couple strongly insisted that their daughter should become a doctor. The, doctor, the daughter obediently attended medical school. Toward the conclusion of her medical training, however, she became mentally confused and emotionally upset. She was confined to a mental institution and was given psychiatric treatment. Now, please understand that this book was written a long time ago. Well, not that long ago, 1964, okay? So they did that kind of stuff then. Close examination of her situation revealed that her parents had insisted that she specialize in a certain field of medicine which they felt would make her a rich society doctor. But she was interested in specializing in a quite different field in which there would be less financial income, but from which she would derive great satisfaction through the service that she could offer suffering mankind. Thus, a conflict of wills had ensued. This young woman had tried hard not to show her resentment of her parents' interference and she had repressed her feelings. In due time, she, uh, her accumulated hostility resulted in mental imbalance. <laughs> okay, so, do you, have you ever been in a situation where your parents wanted you to do something and you really didn't want to do it? And it really affected you. Now, I won't say mental imbalance, but physically, you could be sick. Physically, you might, they foot force you into a sport and you don't like that sport and you perform badly. There's a lot of things that we can look at when we, when we do this, all right? Only after this young woman had been confined for months in a mental institution and thousands of dollars had been spent in treating her did her parents finally seek spiritual help in the matter. They were immediately advised to stop trying to force their child into a field of medicine she cared nothing about, to consider her an adult, allowing her to follow the course of study in which she was interested. They were also advised to give her emotional freedom in other phases of her life as well. For instance, they had objected to her marrying while in medical school, though all concerned could well afford it. So when the cane power of human will, domination, and possessiveness was cleared up in this situation, and the able or spiritual method of emotional freedom, balance, and adjustment was used, this young woman returned from the confused land of Nod. She was soon released from the mental hospital, happily married, and returned to her studies. She has since become a competent, successful doctor. However, her parents' human force, possessiveness, and domination cost them thousands of dollars, much heartache and worry, and their daughter's untold suffering before they emotionally released her to follow her world and her way. Only did, then did her good and theirs come forth. So, 
I'm going to end this part of her chapter, but I'm going to say this. Going back to William and Harry, right? Harry was unhappy. Harry was he even said in many videos, and the Sussex Squad people will show you those videos because I don't have them on my computer, where he said, I don't like it here. If I get a chance, I want to leave England. I want to go live somewhere else. I don't like the way the, the media is on me, but I've got to do this stuff. You know, my brother makes me do this stuff, and 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 we saw in some videos how his brother the other brother always put him down in interviews that they had with each other he always said negative things to him about him to his face the land of nod and now harry has left the uk and he has created a life that he desired, just like the doctor has gone into the specialty of medicine that she liked, and she is doing well. And Harry is doing well. So, I'm going to read one more section, even though I said I was going to end here, because it says the secret of freedom is the next heading. Parents sometimes think they're doing the right thing when they try to force their will on children. We have lived longer than you, and we know what is best for you. <laughs> yeah, I've heard that one. How often parents try to protect their children from all of life's hard knocks, not realizing that their children need a few hard knocks along the way for their growth and mature understanding. Now, this paragraph doesn't work for the William and Harry thing because they weren't protecting Harry from anything. They were letting him be the scapegoat and anything that he did that was normal teenage stuff or over and above, you know, they let it get out there. Let me continue. How wise are the birds of the air who push their young out of the nest at a certain point in their growth and insist that they learn to fly rather than trying to do everything for them. Birds seem to know that if they shelter their young too long, their little ones will soon turn on them because they know they should be free to rise or fall on their own. When you're tempted to dominate, possess, and force others to your way, remind yourself that only more problems and difficulties will result. Setting others free emotionally means setting yourself free from problems as well. Recently, a distraught businesswoman whose financial affairs and health had hit rock bottom wrote to her. She asked for prayers, for guidance about her apparently hopeless financial and health problems. In the last line of her letter, she added what I suspect may have been the whole secret of her problems. Please pray with me, also for my 30-year-old problem child. <laughs> okay, first thing that came to my mind was King Charles the third. Okay, anyway. Obviously, there was more than a problem child involved in this situation. This mother has since realized that the only way to be free from financial and health problems and health problems is by freeing her child emotionally, allowing him to rise or fall on his own. Your dear ones must have liberty to live their own lives and you must grant it to them or else you will create problems for them and for yourself. Okay, you guys, if you know the story, you're hearing it. It's like 
let him go. Let him be. Go live your life, right? Your children, they want, they want to be a mechanic and you want them to be a lawyer. Yeah, they got lawyer brains, but they want to be a mechanic. Let them be a mechanic. And later, if they decide they want to be a lawyer, wonderful. But let them be happy. Here's a great secret. If you really want to free yourself from all types of problems in mind, body and affairs, then emotionally you must release other people to their good in their own way. Nothing is ever lost through release. Instead, the way is then open for great good to come to all involved. Your own freedom and well-being depends upon such release, as does the freedom and well-being of your loved ones. As Job's friends reminded him, there is a spirit in man, and that's Job 32.8 for those of you who want to know. Bless that spirit of good in your loved ones. Cast all burdens and problems on the spirit of God within them. Bless their divinity and loose them to find it and develop it in their own individual way. The results will be infinitely better than anything you could foresee or create for them in the final outworking. Though this good may not appear immediately like the prodigal son, your loved ones have to have time to find themselves to come to their spiritual system senses. So if you have someone that you are concerned about, just mentally affirm that the best is going to happen for them. Bless their divinity and let them loose to find their own way. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share so others can know they have the power to create the life they desire. This is Beverly Fells Jones, the Silver Fox of Consciousness. And as you have believed, let it be done to you. And it is so. And I will see you in the next video.